before the action starts, I'm going to come on here and give y'all a little background on how I got Bo and how long I've had him and everything and, and how I noticed that he was getting sick. So about two and a half years ago, I guess, I get a phone call from one of my good buddies down in Greenville. He, uh, I coon hunt with him an awful lot and he's got some dogs, uh, some real good dogs. Uh, but he calls me one evening and he says, I got a boy that I've hunted with before who's got uh, a dog that's out of the bloodline of his dog. And he said he's hunted with him and he's seen him tree coons and he's, he seems to be a, a pretty decent dog and he's wanting to get rid of him for free. So he called me and at first, I I didn't really know because I had a dog at the time. Uh, the dog I have right now, Bluebell, the female blue tick. I had her, and I was she was doing all right. You know, I was training coons and stuff with her, but I figured, well, if it's a dog for free, I might as well get it and try it out. So that's what I did. It was uh, around July, and I took him the first night and treated coon. And for a free dog, you couldn't ask for no better. And I continued to hunt him throughout the year and I treated several coons with him and, and had a blast with him. Next year, hunted him pretty late in the season. That's usually when I start to hunt, when the leaves are off the trees and stuff. And usually around Christmas break when I was off of school and stuff is usually when I start hunting awful hard. But uh, hunted him last year good, treated a lot of coons with him, done completely fine, had another good year. Then this year rolls around and I started hunting him around December awful hard. We uh, hunted one week every night we could treat, I think, around six coons. I mean, he was doing real good. I mean, I had a good, good dog. And the last video that y'all are about to watch, uh, I noticed that on the second tree we was at, we treated a den tree, and on the way out, I noticed that he was struggling to go to the bathroom and actually he was passing blood too and I discovered a knot right underneath his tail and that's when I figured that I might as well take him to the vet before something bad really happens. So we take him to the vet and uh, they kept him overnight, said they give us a call the next day, let us know what was going on with him. I didn't get a phone call, so I called the vet back, and I asked, I was checking on my dog. They said he was doing fine, that if he continues to do fine, I can come get him tomorrow. We got him the next day, brought him home, and he was not doing any good. And it turned out that he had cancer. And I'm not sure if he had just got cancer the week that we were hunting him hard, or if he had it all along, and when we really started hunting him hard, that's when it really started to affect him. He was an older dog, I believe he was around 10 years old, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, a lot of, of those coon dogs like that don't live, you know, too long. But he had a good 10 years for sure. So yet, I, they gave me some pills to give him and I gave him them until I finally ran out of them. And he was doing pretty good. He started eating and everything and I thought, well, he might pull out of it. But it was a Wednesday evening came woke up and uh discovered that he he didn't make it through the night or he didn't make it through that morning or or something and i brought him i brought him up here on the mountain to bury him this is where i'm actually filming this right here i buried him on top of the mountain i felt like that's what i should have done was bury him since he was such a good dog but you know what happens to the best of us you're going to get good coon dogs and they're going to die on you i mean that's just part of hunting as of right now, that's pretty much why we haven't been posting. It's, I have not coon hunted in probably two weeks since he's passed away. It's really been hard on me. I just haven't really been wanting to go since you know, every time I'd snap him from the lead, I could about guarantee you that I was training a coon. Hopefully get me another dog so I can start hunting because it just, I do not feel the same without hunting. Anyways, this video is going to be the last hunt that I hunted with him and every single picture and footage I have of hunting with him. This video is pretty much going to be a memory of Bo. Um, that way I can always come back and watch it and, and see how good of a dog he was and also share it with you guys. But uh, this is what this video is going to be about and uh, also the last hunt that I ever got to hunt with him.
Just got in the woods. It's about six o'clock now. Getting ready to turn bow loose. See if we can't trace a few coons tonight. Well, y'all, Bo just struck in. He's at 270 yards. Sounding good going around the ridge there. He should put one up here in a few minutes. It's a pretty good place for hunting back in here. We found it once before and treated coon one night. So that's the reason we came back over here. See if he can't put it up here in a few minutes. Bow's fell treed at 341 yards. My Garmin's a little messed up. I believe I need to update it. That's the reason it's showing wide everywhere but he's treed at 330 yard, 39 yards from where we turn loose so we're getting ready to go in here to him well we drove within 150 yards of him we're getting out of the truck now going to him hopefully he's got a coon treed up a tree well we got to the tree and both was treed up this tree right here we popped the coon it's sitting right up there on the other side of that tree he ran down here in these large bushes and started treeing up this big pine tree. I was wondering what in the world he's doing. Now he's a coon sitting in that pine tree too. So we're going to shoot one out here to him and go some other place, I guess. Straight up this big pine tree right here. Oh, oh, oh. 
Um, 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 um